To give you a very brief introduction, my name is Jason Lee. I'm the APAC Business Development Manager from Network Optics. And together with us today is Christopher from the OneBerry Technology team. Yeah. yeah so I, I, I want to apologize again to keep everybody waiting. Thank you so much. If you have any questions during the webinar, you will see a question tab in the control panel. Please feel free to ask the questions and then we will get back to you during the presentation or at the end of the Q&A sessions. Yeah, so before Christopher starts, I'd like to give you a brief intro about OneBerry Technology. So they are one of NX partners in Singapore and they've been doing really well in the professional security services. And I believe the product of ours comes to their life very often because you are monitoring so many cameras every day and then you are flooded with events and informations all the time. So the solution today Christopher will share with us uh, could be a very good practice for security service provider or any security involved personnel to know what could be another way to solve your day-to-day -day issues with a very enlarging security projects you have. Okay, so I'll give the stage to Christopher. Yeah, thank you, Christopher. Okay, okay, thanks, Jason. So, okay. So thanks everyone for coming and attending the webinar and also thanks to Jason and NX for hosting the webinar. So my name is Christopher and I'm from Wanberry. I'm from the Avasa software development team within Wanberry. So for the viewers outside of uh, Singapore, so just some short introduction on the background of Wanberry. So Wanberry is a uh, situation in Singapore and we are generally <clears throat> in the space of uh, security and software solutions and, and some hardware as well. So basically, we carry a variety of uh, video analytic products, the usual ones like uh, face recognition, uh, license plate and so on. But we also do have our own software and hardware IP. IP. So in, on the software side, we do development for a variety of software projects. And most notably, we do have our own uh, software products as well. So we have Alas, which is what I'll be uh, explaining and showing today. And there's also Invisiron, which is the cybersecurity part of uh, things. And we also have some hardware on our side where we have our own uh, robot platform for uh, mobile video surveillance. And also we do have uh, this thing called MobiCam, which is some sort of a mobile camera deployment platform that is capable of deploying everywhere. Um, and the key thing is that there's a high degree of uh, energy autonomy. So that's the main thing that makes it uh, uh, mobile and deployable in many places. So, but the webinar today is focused on Avas, where I'll present basically what Avas is all about. And I'll also be uh, giving a sneak preview of our next release, which is based on the live uh, platform that's running inside our office and we have many cameras installed on site. So there'll be a Q&A session towards uh, the end after the demo session. And um, I'm sure there'll be quite a lot of questions that will be coming. Yeah. So basically what Avas is, right, is that it's a purely software product. And it basically, its acronym is basically stands for uh, Anomaly Recognition Video Analytics System. So as the name suggests, it basically performs an anomaly detection, usually in the context of a CCTV security type of scenarios. And the definition of anomaly from the software point of view is a deviation from the norm in short. So what it essentially does is observe motion. It formulates its opinion of what's a normal motion for that particular scene. And during the detection, uh, a deviation of motion from this uh, previously observed uh, memory or learned model to be considered an anomaly. So basically, why would you want to use ARAS or the motivations for doing so, right? Um, it's a useful tool for situations where it's impractical to monitor 
even with a moderate number of cameras. So you can imagine scenarios where you have a video wall with uh, many, many streams coming in, all laid out in a grid type of uh, configuration. And it's really difficult for human operators to spot anything that's going on within one of those uh, cell in the grid. And we actually did some tests where you know, we have five by five grids and someone was climbing over the fence uh, in one of those uh, cells and it's actually not spotted many, uh, many of the times. So humans do have some sort of a natural cognitive blind spot when they are presented with a huge amount of information. And uh, furthermore, in these scenarios, uh, the operators usually they get uh, tired and more easy. So such methods of uh, performing uh, video surveillance is uh, not really that effective in practice. So Abbas tries to alleviate this by offering uh, operators or you know, real estate owners some level of uh, situation awareness. Uh, the key idea here is really not to replace humans, but help operators to manage the huge amount of information by presenting only a tiny fraction of the total amount of videos that otherwise would have to be eyeballed 24 7. And in contrast to rule based solutions, usually rules uh, one might uh, see it as some sort of a fully automated and clearly defined uh, solution because it has very clearly defined boundaries. But the reality is that um, you still need a human in the loop to verify the alarms before they take any action on the alarms. So, any event, another advantage of us is that it's helpful in discovering the unknown, uh, where there might be certain events outside the scope of the rules that might already be implemented in place that's happening, but because it's not within the boundary of detection of uh, the rule-based systems, they do not get noticed. So Avas helps in the discovery of such uh, new unknowns and essentially is asking the question of uh, what, what else is going on under my nose. So I will be able to show what it looks like uh, based on our in-house uh, test site in the office. Um, so finally, Avas offers the opportunity to reduce uh, manpower and also more importantly, reduce the uh, site, uh, on-site real estate. Uh, because in the fire and command control centers, you know, you have these screens taking up space, the servers taking up space, and you need to cater for air conditioning and so on for the servers. And Avas offers uh, some savings and solutions in terms of that as well. So, I'll, have to unplug for sure. I'll, I'll play a video to illustrate what Avas is about. In today's security environment, less than 98% of CCTV footage is being monitored in real time. This is due to constrained resources and limitations in human ability to focus for long hours. Avas is an AI-assisted video anomaly detection system that flags out unusual events to security monitors in real time. It requires no input performance or great configuration and analyzes vast amounts of video data using unsupervised machine learning without any human intervention. As a result, less manpower is needed to effectively monitor large facilities with extensive camera networks. This enhances safety and security of facilities, especially during silent hours. Avas is a lightweight engine that does not require extensive service settings. It can be implemented on large existing CCTV networks with ease and is future for expansion of camera access at any time. It requires only a simple wall station for launch, which is a large cost saving for video walls and real estate. Avas can be applied across a variety of environments discovering a wide range of abnormal events and behaviors 
that facility managements are unaware of. These data can provide useful information for operational planning and crisis management facilities. With ARBAS proactive monitoring and early detection, no possible enabling response teams to prevent symptoms from escalating. We are redefining security by making surveillance smart detect. ARBAS, the future of smart surveillance. Nice video. Okay. Are you are you able to hear me? Yes, yes. Oh good. Hello. Oh, hello, Christopher. I can hear you. I think we can hear you. Hello? Oh, hello? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Okay, yeah. I'll probably my okay, thanks. Yeah. No so, problem. And we can hear the video very well too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So to explain a little bit more, right, and expand on the idea of uh, information and reduction uh, in more detail. So we can imagine first a scenario where we have uh, the most basic setup where we have a live wall uh, full of videos. You know, there's too many monitors to, 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 to monitor and then uh, is humans naturally have a limited attention span. So uh, there's some limitation to the amount of uh, the videos that they can actually monitor. So one easy way, right, for low hanging fruit would be to stream only on, uh, only for cases where there's motion that is being detected. Um, you know, we can place it at a bop out of like 50-50 kind of a scenario where there's motion you show, no motion you don't show. Uh, they filter out a certain portion of it, but um, there's still quite a certain amount of information, and it's not really uh, that intelligent. So, Avas takes this uh, idea much further by filtering out uh, the majority of the information where it considers to be normal, uh, as much as 99% of uh, the information or the video volume. And the idea is that Avas will pop up the video clip of what's uh, going on when any of the streams has any abnormal information that is uh, that's happening. So it's essentially some sort of a tap on the shoulder, tap on the shoulder on the security operators to alert them, hey, there's something uh, strange that's going on in one of the streams and it's something that you need to take a look at. So this is uh, basically something that helps the operators do some sort of uh, smart virtual patrolling and increases the situation awareness of uh, the security operators. So, Avas, right, from a more product technical point of view, right? so what Avas uh, features is essentially something that is uh, non rule based and self learning. So, basically, it does not perform a specific detection for any specific events like uh, light crossing, loitering, and so on. Uh, it learns what is normal for the particular scene, and it surfaces the deviation from the scene and throws an alarm in real time. And the boundary of detection right, for ours is kind of different from Ruby systems. So it's actually dependent on what goes on in the scene uh, during the, the learning. But actually, the learning is also taking place uh, online, meaning that as is receiving information frame by frame from the video streams, is performing detection, but it's also updating its own internal model of what's uh, normal for that particular scene. And one important thing is that AWAS is based on motion fundamentally rather than being object based. So there are many systems out there which uh, performs object detection as its first thing. So if there are other unknown objects that appears, uh, the rule systems will not be capable of detecting such uh, scenarios. But since Avas is based on motion only, it is not limited by this uh, predefined list of objects in order to uh, evaluate or consider what is, it means to be anomalous. So from, from the deployment point of view, um, 
Avas is easy to deploy. So all that is required is to hook up cameras by pointing to the IP address and your logic. And because it's uh, doing learning and detection at the same time, there's no specific need to say that you know, there's a learning stage and there's a detection stage and so on. Um, but one rule of thumb that we usually have is that uh, you just let it run for a few days in order to have an understanding of what's uh, normal for that particular scene. And after that few days, we turn on the detection. And, and it runs on a standard commercial of the shelf servers with uh, GPU cards and also on a standard lin uh, operating system such as uh, Windows or uh, uh, Windows or Linux. And we highly recommend uh, the, the, the Linux operating system. It is also integrated with super existing DMS and one of which uh, is NX Windows, of course. Um, it is simple and efficient in the sense that uh, we do provide simple mechanisms for providing a live alert alarm volume control. So the control is on the volume of alarms that will appear on the live wall, which is the, the, the grid wall, which I will show later on. So it is based on the prioritization of alarms, which can be manual or automatic. And the manual part allows user intervention in order to specify certain types of alarms, which they want to put it to a low priority and not show up onto the live wall. But in any case, all al alarms and events, we do record them in case there's a need to go through the uh, uh, events and in order to know what's going on as well. Christopher, quick questions. Uh, yeah. which, which, Lin which Linux OS does Avas support? So, uh, Avas supports Ubuntu, yeah. but we package it in a Docker, so it, ah, in Docker. it doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's easy to deploy from that point of view. Got it, got it. Thank yeah. you. Sure, no problem. And so right here we have uh, four videos uh, illustrating like some of the uh, sample scenarios where alarms are triggered. So on the top left here, you can see uh, the stop sign. So that indirectly indicates the usual motion of exiting the indoor car park uh, going out. But uh, as we can see when I play this video, you know. Someone is trying to do something funny by going in the opposite direction. Probably he doesn't want to pay uh, to enter the indoor car park, for instance. You know, similar thing on the bottom right, where it's some sort of uh, contrary to motion. You have the escalator going up on the right, and then escalator going down on the left. And you know, it turns out that some people like to go in a direction that's contrary to the motion uh, direction of uh, the escalator. You know, another one would be like uh, big objects. Because the motion generated by big objects tends to be uh, not that usual in comparison to the usual activities and they, they tend to get flagged out as well. And also one feature of ours is that we do uh, some sort of detection for chaotic motion kind of events. You know, in this particular case, it's some sort of uh, altercation or spike between between two two persons, or it can be a group of persons even. So this is the light wall view that I've been talking about. Um, is the simplest way of uh, using Avas. So basically, the operators will just sit in front of this light wall and it's uh, sit and watch kind of scenario. It's completely passive. So the idea is that whenever there's any anomaly occurring, one any one of the streams, it will pop up uh, with a short video clip showing what's going on right now in the streams. So if the operator sees something that is strange or uh, something that is fixed, he needs to take action on that, he will proceed to do so. And I'll be able to show this later on uh, in, in the demo as well. Is the event pop up on this uh, viewing grid like by orders? Like the one comes first, will go to the upper left corner and then take yeah, yeah, sequence. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 
there's some sort of uh, implicit order, but the algorithm manages the the ordering of the videos. So it's basically mm. left to right, top to top to bottom kind of thing. Got it. Yeah. So one question that many might have is that how does Avas uh, fit or relate to other types of uh, video analytics system, right? So the the way I've chosen to represent this whole ecosystem is in the form of a triangle in order to visualize uh, the whole position. So on the top of the triangle, you have the apex, which is uh, sharp and narrow. And what that means is that it's something sharp is specific. It's looking for you know things like fire, piping, and so on, or face recognition or license plate. And essentially provides no discovery because it's looking at something uh, that only one thing that the rules are built for. And if you go down lower in the triangle in the mid portion, uh, we have tools like uh, video search, uh, video summarization and synopsis. So in this point of view, the width is slightly larger. It provides some amount of discovery, usually by search or by summarization. But um, it's still specific in a certain sense because they are usually more object based and they tend to you know, do some sort of, some level of uh, object tracking and pulling the tracks together in a shorter time form so that the user will be able to uh, see what's going on within a one hour time frame in like five minutes and so on. And but Avas is much lower at the bottom of this triangle where it has a very wide base and it's something that allows for discovery of new things but at the same time it's also generic and it's not something that is looking for uh, something very specific like rules so one thing we can consider is how avas can be used uh, with other kinds of systems how, how do we implement avas uh, from a solutions perspective. So Avas is different from rule-based uh, systems and they can use in conjunction in two ways. So one of the ways is you can run the rules and also Avas concurrently, making the same streams and you, you have some ideas of what you want to look for and you have the rule-based systems and you want to know what's going on and you run uh, Avas uh, at the site concurrently. But the other way of uh, doing, doing this it will be to run Avas first as a layer, where Avas will serve as some sort of a filter mechanism before passing those events on to a rule-based system. Um, the drawback of doing so is that if there's any events that is not captured by Avas, the rule-based systems will not have the opportunity in order to perform this kind of detection. But however, the advantage is that the it reduces the amount of uh, computational resource servers and so on and the, the cost of buying them housing them uh, by quite a lot actually because avas is able to reduce the amount of uh, information by as much as 99 percent so the configuration really depends on the type of application and the objective of uh, the system as a whole So Avas has a uh, potential to detect a wide variety of anomalies. So the point I'm trying to emphasize here is that it provides the discovery aspect, which is not found in the usual rule-based systems. So for Avas, events which are triggered are not restricted on based on what we already know, meaning that you know some uh, deployments they might have in my say I, I want to look for intrusion and so on but there might be other things which are not uh, which are happening which are not already being considered by the people who are implementing such systems uh, and Avas the events surface are not limited from the point of view of discovery but you have to keep in mind that it is not designed or built to detect for certain specific scenarios like uh, for the rule-based systems. So we can recall the triangle diagram just now where we have Avas at the bottom of the triangle where it's generic, which is in contrast to the rules, which is uh, pointed and sharp. It's looking for that, that one thing.
So there are many verticals that can be applied uh, to from the perspective of Avas. Um, here you can see a list of various verticals and some of the use case where Avas might come in is through either a standalone or Avas plus some, some other type of solution. So the examples are you know, like in commercial, education, industrial, critical infrastructure, healthcare, and banking. So I, I guess it's easy to see like the, the use case from the slides itself. But uh, some of the more important ones which I find interesting is like a, a detection of camera help of tampering. So this is one of the features that is provided by Avas but is uh, often neglected in practice because uh, many operators often do not uh, identify these issues in time and you know they realize only after a long while that uh, some camera probably has gone down uh, it is blocked or maybe uh, the angle has been shifted for, for, some, for some one reason or another and Avas is potentially able to surface such events um, and also one interesting feedback from one of our clients who is in the commercial space is that uh, they do find Avas uh, useful for night shifts so usually for night shifts, they have a reduced reduction in manpower, but the number of cameras still remain the same. So what they use Avas for is to use it as some sort of uh, virtual patrolling kind of uh, situ uh, solution. And this virtual patrol actually provides some level of uh, physical protection or security for the operators themselves, you know, because they do not have to go around and walk around the premise in the middle of the night. And Avas does this for them by performing some sort of intelligent virtual patrol, bas uh, basically bringing the patrol on the ground directly to the operators in front of their screens. And usually the events which are surfaced at night tend to be more interesting or, or of concern to the operators themselves. So in terms of uh, deployment architecture, um, this is the very deployed Typical deployment scenario where we have uh, our Avas GPU server, which is the backend part, which is doing all the processing. So Avas has the option to either ingest uh, feeds directly from the IP camera in the form of RTSP, or they can go through uh, the VMS uh, in order to obtain those feeds. So in our on-site uh, demonstration, which I will show later on, those feeds are uh, obtained through the NX uh, REST uh, API interfaces where they provide us uh, the RTSP address and we, co we connect to those uh, streams using those. And upon detection of any events, Avas will be able to send the alarms through the SDK or API to the VMS. And from the operator's point of view, they have two options of consuming the alarms. So the first option would be to use the client UI program of the VMS. So for example, NX, they have their own uh, NX Windows client program, which uh, they, have, they not only show the recordings, but they also have bookmarks in which they will show the uh, various events that, that is triggered by any of the systems connected. But we also do have our own Avas client as well, where they will be able to see the alarms, uh, look at the bookmarks and do some uh, level of our configuration as well. So what's the commercial value proposition for Avas, right? Basically, by reducing the amount of information that the operators have to see, you require fewer eyeballs, essentially, in order to go through uh, the videos and to know what's going on. So it leads to a reduction in the, in the human operators that's required in order to in order to do this uh, CCTV type of uh, surveillance and provide security services. It also provides a redu reduction in fatigue for the guard force, both uh, mentally and physically. And this will free the security operators to do more productive and important things rather than you know, sitting down and just uh, watching the videos. And it also leads to reduction in the operating cost of the security operations center where you require less number of screens, so your uh, command and control center can be much smaller. It's a reduction in physical real estates. And also, because Avas is capable of supporting a large number of streams per server, um, the um, number of servers 
required to purchase for the same amount of cameras will be much fewer. So you essentially save from capex. And it also in offers uh, intangible security benefits, such as uh, you know, being able to respond to events in real time. And also, importantly, awareness of uh, the environment in order to prevent you know, potentially uh, reputation damaging events you know, or oversights in the monitoring of the premise. You, know, you might notice that there's something uh, dangerous that's obstructing or you know, things like that. Uh, when you do this discovery, you will be able to preemptively take actions in order to prevent uh, disastrous actions from, or events from happening. Mm -hmm. So Avas is uh, mentioned actually. So we just had our uh, National Day and our next National Day rally is actually coming up soon. So in the National Day rally of 1997, so there was a, in a speech made by the Prime Minister. Um, he cited an example of an application in the context of uh, his vision of a smart nation amongst uh, other applications. So he mentioned this idea of flagging something only when uh, there's anything unusual happening in one of the streams and so on. And if you don't need 1,000 people watching those cameras and you just need a handful of them, like 10 or so. And this is exactly what uh, Avas is doing. And Avas fits in perfectly with the narrative and the vision of uh, smart nation. And also the idea that technology is supposed to make uh, our lives easier. So, and this Avas product has also won a Malayan Awards in the Safety and Security Asia exhibition in uh, 2018. So I'll go on to the live demo right now. That will be great. Thanks yeah, a lot. I'll leave, uh, questions for the end if you have them. Yeah, yeah, let's. There are some questions, but let's start with the live demo first. I will keep the questions to the end. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sure there are, you know, some questions might be answered when you see this uh, live yeah, demo. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So the setup of this uh, on site live demo, right, is something that is. Uh, actually very similar to uh, what is described in the slides that we showed just now, the architecture. We have our Avas uh, GPU server, which is connected and pulling streams from the NX server. And we are also sending our Boombark alarms uh, to NX. So, uh, are we launching NX flying program? Yeah, so you can see all these cameras that we have, uh, which is uh, connected to NX, and these cameras are situated within our building. And mm -hmm. sorry, this. Yeah. So you can see me right here. I refinance. Yeah. So this way oh. I'm sitting at. Uh, there you are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so this is the one very concern. <laughs> So any of the events, uh, they will appear as uh, bookmarks because the uh, Avas uh, sends any of the events to the NX server and will appear as uh, bookmarks. They will be av available for you. So and now I, I, have... I see a pretty detailed descriptions about each events, like the, yeah, so the, the we... events and uh, the description of the event. Cool. Yeah, we provide some level of uh, metadata information, you know, in order mm -hmm. to help users understand it. Uh, what's going on, especially. So on the other side, um, we have this light wall, which is basically the main centerpiece of this uh, AVA software. Of course, we do have uh, the ability to review path alarms, which I will show later on, and also to perform configuration. Mm. So this, this system is running live, so probably there might be some events that will pop up in this live view, but our attempt to you know, to do some some uh, trigger some events. So I'll have to leave my phone for that. Yeah. 
yeah, so basically this is a uh, uh, obstruction scenario. Hmm. Yeah, we do that. Yeah. So you can see me sitting there. Yeah. So that's uh, an example of uh, the, the obstruction or the camera help uh, aspect of it. I can also attempt to you know uh, figure some some events by you know while we waving my hands around and view up here. Yeah, you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so this, it, it, it could the, be something like someone waving hand and calling for help in front of the cameras, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't happen so, normally. Yeah. Yeah, I've even heard of some um, news recently of someone actually waving to the camera asking for help. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I don't think they're well for that person. So these are some of the uh, simple scenarios that could happen in life. Um, but you know, demonstrations like these are not really that interesting. So uh, what, what I did also was to go through the events that was happening in the past two weeks. And I bookmarked some of the more interesting uh, ones that was uh, occurring. So, uh, for example, we have uh, you know, more security related ones like uh, the, the guy coming up from the fence. Well, not exactly from the fence, but it's outside the point. So this happened like at 9 p.m. No one was around. And some guy suspiciously came up from some corner that probably you know you might want to check out. Or uh, well, this not security, but yeah, we just <laughs> saw someone you know walking around, smoking around. You know, so, uh, uh, this guy was, this event was because the guy is smoking or the guy appear in a in a time where usually no people. Oh yeah, so th that's a good question, right? So it doesn't really catch the smoke or the act of smoking, but it's because of the motion pattern, the the trajectory or the the way he walks and so on. Um, usually. It's the entrance where usually the cars are moving around. So him moving mm -hmm. in this uh, particular way will trigger the alarms. I see. I see. So it's, it's the same thing, right? So in this case, it's just it happens to be uh, someone who is on his bicycle and is swirling around vigorously, and then we see. It. Mm, okay. Uh, then we also have. Uh, well, this is not exactly a fight scenario, but you know, this we have uh, some of our staff, which is like messing around. Which is the by the system. So these are some of the more, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's dangerous, but you know, it's probably like a bit more security related, but uh, others can also be used for you know, non-security related uh, maintenance type of uh, events. Uh, so things like uh, Let's see. No likes uh, flickering in the office. I'm not sure if anyone in the office will feel like that. So we have a copy mm -hmm. light. Yeah. And then uh, that's uh, me messing around the cable. Because yeah, I think we wire some of the stuff. No. Yeah, is the, uh, the words in the remark sections are they automatic generated or or it's something the user add like the fixing cutting or the guy smoking the remarks are they auto automatically generated so these remarks are added by me when i was going through the alarms so okay. this is how okay. able to keep the, the alarms directly as well because of, of this remark so it provides a short description of roughly what's going on so. Mm -hmm. Other than you know, searching based on time, camera, and so which it can be a bit more difficult and troublesome. So some some of these uh, things can be security related. You know, uh, guys climbing on the ladders and so on. Sometimes you might see that they are not observing any of the safety regulations, for instance. And you know, everybody likes uh, chat videos. So I saw this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we, uh, we, since we had our National Day recently, so we had our 
Now we saw this. If I hang out flags. Mm -hmm. And being super patriotic, we hang two of them. It doesn't happen every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's only yeah. during the day. Yeah. Waving the flags, yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, maintenance, uh, you know, people climbing ladders and so on. But also, like, you know, I showed previously uh, moving big boxes, big objects, which usually uh, do not generate that kind of motion and so on. Mm -hmm. Or it can also simply be me uh, going into the office in the morning because I had this camera, which I did obstruction just now, right behind my seat. So this may come in in the morning. So, and, you know, you can also gain some level of awareness, you know, like I op, um, observe a particular runner. You, know, you can see that first time she's carrying the plastic bag. And then it's about, uh, Half an hour later, we can see the same person doing the same thing, but without a plastic bag. Um, hmm. I have no idea what she's doing. And then uh, five minutes later, she's coming back in the opposite direction. So we have other things, you know, like uh, our staff loading, but we have these other movie camps that I was referring That's to. Just yeah, so these are like uh, completely mobile and they can be deployed in here. Or they can be moving uh, behind. So these are some of the unusual activities that were caught by the system. So as you can imagine in such uh, scenarios, simply by quickly going through the alarms, and these alarms are very recent. Uh, these alarms occurred within the past two weeks, actually, in preparation for this. Uh, yeah. yeah. So. You know, every day you spend maybe five, 10 minutes quickly going through the alarms and you'll be able to have a good idea of you know, what's going on around in the vicinity. Uh, if there's anything you need to take attention of and so on. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I think uh, th there's one quick question about that. So uh, uh, a, a partner asked about it, uh, ours at the very beginning, will it produce a high numbers of false positive alarm during the learning phases? And is there a way that uh, the operators can perform to, to shorten the period of learning a scenario? Especially when, when the camera is looking at the a crowded places with a lot of activities happening all the time. Yeah. So. Probably I address the first thing. So the first thing is the idea of uh, false alarms, right? Um, mm -hmm. From Ava's point of view, there is no really notion of a false alarm because it only surfaces what is deviation from the norm, which is what it was observed, what has been observed previously. And uh, the interpretation interpretation of false alarm is not like in the rules where you know where I mentioned there is the boundary are clearly defined. You either yeah. cross the line or you didn't cross the line. But from Ava's mm -hmm. perspective, it's really just a reduction in the amount of uh, volume of information that the particular operator has to go through or see through. It's kind of like a, a real time videos, I mean, summarization kind of thing, if you were to look at it. So there's no really true and false alarm. And you know, whether it's true or false for the same video, it can be interpreted differently for different persons. So someone That's true. running across the yeah. road might be an issue or, or an alarm uh, or you know, probably a traffic police or whoever, but you know, for any other person it might not be a big issue as at all. So, mm -hmm. which is why we have this policy of you know, registering all the alarms in the system. And the prioritization of the alarms is just a matter of controlling the volume of alarms that is appearing on the live world. Which is this? Uh, this this light wall over here. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in our current site, we have about fifty cameras that is connected to our server. And you can see that the the volume of alarm is not overwhelming, and the light wall is currently configured even to show low level uh, prioritizing prioritized alarms 
So all of this actually should be coming up from this uh, the light board itself. Mm -hmm. so, so on to the question, second question, right, which is the speed of learning. The speed of mm -hmm. learning depends on the scene itself, the traffic of the scene. So in fact, if there's more traffic in the scene, it tends to learn faster because it observes a lot more motion. So in a busy road, along a busy road, you, know, you see cars traveling up and down along, along, the, along the respective direction. So you can expect less than our rule of thumb of like seven to 14 days, probably in two or three days even, you would have some pretty good idea of uh, what's normal and what's not normal. But if you contrast it to an open patch of grass, it's difficult to know what's normal for that particular scene, except for the fact that there's no one there. So mm. if anything goes by, you know, walks across that patch of grass, for example, you will tend to uh, throw an alarm. And it probably might take a longer time, especially if there's like a pathway on the open patch of grass. And usually people tend to walk along the pathway, but because the traffic is low, it takes a longer time in order to make that observation and establish a certain laws. Yeah. I see. I that I see. see. Yeah. And Christopher, I think you mentioned that there's one GPU server that is running 50 cameras all together on one server. Yeah. In fact, we can support a lot more by uh, adding the GPU cards. Mm. But in this particular example that I'm running, because it's actually we are limited by the number of cameras we have inside the building. So we have about 40, yeah. 40 something, nearly 50 right now, is actually connected to NX. And I, was, I assume all the 40 to 40 around 50 video strings are being analyzed by the Ava server all the time, right? It's like. Yeah, they are all processed uh, in real time at a minimum like 15 FPS. So that, that is why I'm saying uh, Avas is kind of different from rule-based systems because rule-based systems, by their very nature, they tend to do a lot more object detection kind of thing. So it tends to be exactly. a, a bit heavier so, and the impact of that is exactly. a reduction in the number of streets of the The advantage of Avas is that you can support a massive number of streams on one server, but you do not look mm -hmm. for something very specific, unlike groups. Well, the, the number is actually quite amazing because just one GPU server can handle like more than 50 cameras constantly streaming, you know, 15 frames per second, high resolution video to it. You know? Yeah, yeah, we put a lot of effort into the streaming aspects, into you know, optimizing for the GPU and so on. And this is really uh, to reduce the cost of capex for the clients and the cost that they have to buy racks, buy servers and so on. Got it. Uh, Christopher, would you mind yeah. switch back to the next desktop client? Uh, my oh, colleague perfect. Andy asked the questions like, how the Avars events will be shown in NX? As a, I, I think it's as a bookmark, not as a metadata. And uh, we, we would like to see what other information can be seen in NX. I, I see the priority level. I see some of the keywords about this. Uh, abnormal events. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. 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 So things like uh, you know, for they will say that it's an Avast event, then because we internally Avast detects for a certain type of uh, anomalies. So which mm -hmm. I not really expanded about, but these are the details. So things like uh, what I call here micro models, which are actually uh, motion type of anomalies. Then we have also motion chaotic type of uh, anomalies and also uh, uh, lighting obstruction kind of uh, anomalies as well. And we have also information on the priority level of the alarm, whether it's mean, mm -hmm. high or low. Um, wow. And also okay. the level. The algorithm does provide some estimate of uh, you know, how anomalous is, but uh, usually from operator's point of view, it is not that critical. Mm -hmm. But it could be critical from you know integration with other vendors and so on. The I cluster see. here I... refers to the grouping of the alarms. So as I mentioned, there is a possibility for users to be able to manually specify the type of groupings. So they can group saying that 
um, you can anomaly occurs in a certain region belonging to you know, motorcycle, human, and so on. Then you you put in low high mid priority. So that's the clustering aspect. And it also matches anomaly location with also with the object detect, object detector. Mm -hmm. So we can we choose the kind of objects that we are interested in. Another just for the prioritization, but all alarms will go into the system. I see. Yeah, then with all this metadata, I believe in the search bar a little bit above, if we are looking for priority is low, mid, or high, we can just key in the words like high, then the yeah, next yeah. will just yeah. put her the bookmark. Yeah, so these are this just text uh, metadata information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. So we can also sort of, uh, if we want to review, like just in case we want to review all the full video archive about a low priority event or high priority event in Annex, then we yeah. can use the bookmark search words to, to do that. Yeah, we can search the bookmarks for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Annex does provide, a, the, the Annex client does provide a clean and easy interface for user, other than our own uh, Avas your client. So Avas your client, although you can review the blue box like this, but of course uh, the centerpiece is this uh, this thing. Mm -hmm. So actually in this particular scene, the they are playing from the TV screen and the TV screen is actually uh, giving a lot of uh, chaotic motion alarms. But because we have a mechanism that detects uh, automatically where these uh, frequently occurring alarms come up is able to automatically suppress or reprioritize this type of alarms in the low priority. And it's showing mm -hmm. up now because I'm showing all the alarms that is actually occurring on the system right now. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, I, I also find it the same way the, the Avars client and the NX client are serving for different purposes. And NX is more video driven. Our Avars at the same time is very event driven. And also it, it provides a, a much nicer way for, you know, uh, abnormal alarm pop up unless or, or the user will just be flooded with all the video data on their monitors all the time. Yeah, you're exactly right. It serves different purpose. So ours only plays a certain uh, video segment. Usually we put it at mm -hmm. like a plus minus five seconds or plus minus 10 seconds. It can be configurable, but you know, usually sometimes uh, the operators might want to see a bit more like what's happening mm -hmm. one, two minutes before and they can go on to the NX platform in order to do that uh, level exploration. Yeah. And one more question is that uh, is RVARS and for uh, SI, SI to use it, security operator to use it, or is targeted to for the end users? So RVARS um, can, so the first one is uh, end users. End users definitely are able to use it, and some of our clients are end users themselves. So we do the installation and, you know, with, the UI or whatever BMS UI that they have currently mm -hmm. in order to consume the alarms. We also do provide uh, APIs in order to yep. consume our alarms. So they will, through the API, they will be able to know whether an alarm has occurred and to retrieve the alarm information. And also the third kind of integration is where we actively send the uh, alarms up to their platforms. But of course, the mm. provider that the third party provides the SDK, like what NX is doing. Yeah. Yeah. I see. And, and by the way, is the video clips that is played in the Arvas client, are they downloaded to the Arvas server or, or they, are, they are still in the NX archive database and the Arvas just pull the playback from the NX database? Yeah, so in, in this particular demo, all the videos that we have, they are pulled from NX. We do not store any uh, videos in our own database. It's only um, in certain situations where you know we do not even have any VMS, then we provide the option. But we usually do not recommend that, as it takes it, it takes up uh, some level of storage. But we leave it that to the yeah. NX yeah, in general. So even for live video feed, live video feed, we put a, a live stream coming. 
and also for the for this uh, video recording, we, we pull historical footage from NX. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, this way you only need, need to keep one set of the recording archives. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay, okay. And I, 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 we don't need to talk about the exact pricing, but can you share with us the, the framework of the pricing? Like, is there a server license, per camera channel license, and other feature type of licenses? <laughs> um, I'm not dealing with the sales aspect frequently, but um, of course, um, you can always contact our sales uh, in one very. Mm -hmm. I believe it's sure. more towards the per channel kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Christopher. I, I really like the first two few videos you share with us. Like uh, when people are going to the opposite of the car street or opposite of the escalator. Yeah. Oh, if oh. we're using a room based type of solution, that will be hard to or that will cost a lot or be hard, even even not possible to, to perform something like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But that, that's really interesting, yeah, to see this. Any any other questions so far? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Christopher, can you share your contact information on the monitor again? My in the chat or yeah, in your I'm sorry in your uh, your presentation the last page of your presentation oh. I believe there is your your contact information yeah I just want to. Give everyone uh, yeah. a look at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. So everyone, thanks a lot for your time joining the webinar. So you can find uh, Christopher uh, and OneBerry's contact information on the screen. So if you are interested in how uh, more information about Avars or how it works with Annex, you can feel free to contact the OneBerry team. They have a lot of experience with Annex Witness, and they also use Arbos and NX on their own sites. So they have a lot of field experience they can share with you. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Jason. Uh, I also like to add that, you know, in, as a developer in the software development team, I find that uh, NX does provide one of the most uh, pleasant and positive experience when it comes to integration and so on. So really appreciate that support from NX and from Jason. Thank you so much, Christopher. We are trying our hard, our best, you know, to provide a, a comprehensive <laughs> development tools, yeah, yeah, so that the two solutions can work seamlessly, like like your cases, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining our webinar today. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or contact Christopher from the OneBerry team. In about one two weeks' time, we will upload this webinar to NX YouTube channel. And if you want to share that with your team member or end users to know more about this solution, please feel free to share. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Christopher. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. My pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Take care, everyone. I'll, okay, sure. I'll close the session. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. Thanks. Bye.